<sighs> well have we done, thrice valiant countrymen. But all's not done, yet keep the French the field. <laughs> the Duke of York commends him to your majesty. <coughs> Is he good on Thrice within this hour I saw him down, but thrice up again and fighting. From helmet to the spur, all blood was he. In such array, brave soldier doth he lie, larding the plain. And by his bloody side, yoke fellow with his honor, owing wounds, the noble Earl of Suffolk also lays. The pretty and sweet manner of it brought those waters to me that I would have stopped if I had man enough in me, but all my mother came into my eyes and brought me forth to tears. I blame you, God. For hearing this, I must perforce compound with misful eyes, or they will issue too. No! But hark! What new alarm is this saying? Kill the boys and the luggage! Tis expressly against the laws of arms! Oh, tis an errand of peace and neighboring march now. Give me a bark. Is it not in your own party? Tis certain there's not a boy left alive. But the cowardly rascals that ran from the battle have done this ah! thing. Besides, they burned and carried off all those in the king's tent. Here's his majesty. Ah! I was not angry. I came to France until this instant. Take a trumpet, Harold. Ride unto the horsemen on yon field. Bid them come down or void the field. They do offend our sight. Yeah. Uh, if not, we will go to them and scur them away as swift as stones and force from the old Assyrian slings. Besides, we will cut the throats of those we have, and not a man of them that we shall take shall taste our mercy. Go and tell them so. The herald of the French, my liege. Her eyes are humbler than they used to be. How now? What means this, Harold? Knowest not that I have find my bones? For ransom? Comest thou again for ransom? No, great king, I come to thee for charitable license, that we may wander o'er the bloody field to book our dead and then to bury them. To sort our nobles from our common men, for many of our princes, war the wild, lie drowned and soaked in mercenary blood. So too do our vulgar drench their peasant limbs and blood of princes. And their wounded steeds spread fetlock deep in gore, and with warm rage took out their armored hills at their dead masters, killing them twice. Oh, give us leave, great king, to view the field in safety and dispose of their dead bodies. I tell thee truly, Harold. I know not if the day be ours or no, for many of your horsemen peer and gallop o'er the field. The day is yours. <laughs> yes! God be praised, <laughs> and not our strength for it. <sighs> what is this castle called that stands hard by? They call it Agincourt. Then call we this the field of Agincourt, fought on the day of Crispin Crispianus. Your Majesty's grandfather of famous memory, and your great uncle Edward, the Black Prince of Wales, as I have read in Chronicles, fought a most brave battle here in France. They did, Flewellyn. Your Majesty speaks very true. If your Majesty has remembered, the Welshmen did a good service in the garden where leeks did grow, wearing leeks in their motley caps, which, as your Majesty knows, to this hour is an honorable badge of service. And I do believe your Majesty takes no scorn in wearing the leek upon St. David's Day. I wear it for a memorable honor, for I am Welsh, you know, good countryman. All oh, the water in the Rye could not wash your majesty's Welsh blood from your body. God bless it and preserve it, so long as it pleases his grace and his majesty. Thanks. Good, my country. Oh, by yes, so I am your country. I care not who knows it. I will confess it to all the world. I need not be ashamed of your majesty, so long as your majesty is an honest man. God keep me safe. Gower, go with her. Bring back just notice of the numbers dead on both sides.
call yonder fellow here? Soldier, you must come to the king. <laughs> Soldier, why wearest thou that glove and that cap? And please, your majesty, it is the gage of one that I should fight with all, if he be alive. An Englishman. And please, your majesty, a rascal that swaggered with me last night, who, if alive, never dared to challenge his glove, I have sworn to take him a box of the ear. <laughs> Or if I can see my glove in his cap, which he swore as he was a soldier, he would wear for life, I will strike it out soundly. What thinkest thou, Captain Fluella? Is it right this soldier keep her oath? She is a villain or craven else, and please your majesty in my conscience. It may be her enemy is a gentleman of great sort, far from the answer of her degree. He may be as good a gentleman as the devil, as Lucifer behaves above himself, but it is necessary, look your grace, that she keep her vow and her oath. If she be perjured, see you now, her reputation is as errant a villain in jack sauce as ever her black shoe trod upon God's ground and earth in my conscience law. Then keep thou vow, Zero, when thou meetest the fellow. So I will, my liege, as I live. Who service thou under? Under Captain Gower, my liege. Gower is a good captain. It's good knowledge of literature and wars. Call him hither to me, soldier. I will, my liege. Fluellen. Take thou this favor and wear it in thy cap. <laughs> when Alanson and myself were down together, I plucked this glove from his helm. If anyone challenge it, he be a friend to Alanson and an enemy to our person. If thou encounter such a one, apprehend him, and thou dost me love. Your majesty does me as good honors as can be desired in the hearts of his subjects. I would fain see the man that has but two legs become a grief to this glove. <laughs> That is all. But I would fain see it once. God be praised, I might see it. Knowest thou Gower? Gower is my friend and please you. I pray thee, call him hither to me. I will fetch him. Westmoreland. Follow Fluellen closely at the heels. The glove I have given her may happily purchase her a box of the ears. <laughs> It is the soldier's. I, by warrant, should wear it myself. If that the soldier should strike at her, as I judge by her blunt bearing, she will keep her oath. See, there be no harm between them. I do know Fluellen Valiant, touched with collar, hot as gunpowder, and quickly will return an injury. See, there be no harm. Come you with me, Uncle Exit. Doth fortune play the housewife with me now? News have I that my nail is dead at the spittle of malady of friends. And thus my rendezvous is quite cut off. Old oh, do I wax, and from my weary limbs honor is cudgel. Well, bald will I turn. Something <coughs> mean to cut purse of quick hand. To England will I steal, and there I'll steal. The patches shall I get upon these scars, and claim I got them in the Gallia Wars. <laughs> 